Okay, it's now Sunday morning. I'm away to pick up this bar again. We're back at the big house. Wedding bar's in there, so I just need to dis dis dismantle it. I'm here quite early, so I don't expect to see anyone. There we go. They decorated the, all the flowers and whatnot. Obviously, the bar people have been and taken away all their kit. They have got a very cool Massey 35. A 35 there and a, a wee grey Fergie over here. That is a belter. I think they had all their beers in here, yeah. That's a good idea. I like it. This is almost identical to mine, but obviously a lot better condition. Petrol paraffin. Oh, it's a belter. I better just put this back together. I don't want to break the paint. What's in the toolbox? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This must have been restored relatively recently. Everything is pretty much shiny new. Old fur spreader on the back. Is that the bins? Oh, perfect. That one's a bin and that one's a bar. Someone had the beers in it. When you're done, you put them in the bin. I just spoke to a boy. Apparently this one, the wee grey Fergie, has won a show or two. That's Schoon, I think. Anyway, I've admired those lovely machines. I'll get this bar taken down and get home. We've got a keg on tap as well. Lovely, lovely. I could just have a couple of pints here. Smashing, job done. It's just a bit of rubbish. I'll just clear it up. The bar is totally word of mouth. I mean, if you imagine these people are getting married, likelihood is a lot of their friends are similar ages and also getting married, word of mouth, bang, bang, bang. Well, where'd you get your bar? So I make sure and clean up and leave a tidy job behind me so that if their friend does ask, they say, oh yeah, great job he did. Fingers crossed. Smashing, nice view here. Right, just need to strap all this down and we're off. I put a tarp on it on the way out, but it just catches the wind, so I'm gonna put loads of straps on it, should be fine. That's one thing I need to do is make a wee back door for this because all the wee bits are slightly longer than the tatty box. So I need to extend this by six inches and add a wee back door to it. Job done. <laughs> right, another hour and 20 minutes home. Let's go. Not bad. Seven minutes past nine. I left about half six, so I'll be back by half ten. Home. 10.27, four hour round trip. All the bits are still there, so didn't go too badly. Good morning, 20 odd mil of rain last night. Happy days. We were needing it, it was a bit heavy at times. Where are my coos this morning? Way down the bottom of the field, do you see them? Right down there. Good! Good! The rain's just arrived in time. Good! Happy days, what have you been doing? You're in a right mess. Some of the scrawnier ones that were our own ones that had been inside, they've filled out a good bit now. So they're back to looking pretty much fine. Okay, I've noticed a leak of uh, a diesel leak on this tractor. Right in here, so we've noticed a crack. It's wet up there anyway. Mm. Yeah. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, the outlet from it there. Ah, it's got a crack there. That'll be it. Even just turn the ignition, it might just do it when it's trying to prime. Just start it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. It's, I think, a breather from one side of the tank to the other side of the tank. So we take off here and it goes to kind of halfway under the cab, so we take take the plate off the, the cab floor and get into it. I need to go and sort out a flat tire on mum's car. I can leave Kev to get the floor out of there and get the panel off. Right, we've got a wee pinprick hole in this hose here for the sprayer. It's quite a long, big hose. So we're just gonna chop out a section, take it up to Agravista and we'll get our, our repair kit, basically. Take the hacksaw to it. Hose off the sprayer with, there's some tiny holes on it somewhere. There they are. There's a tiny wee gouge out of it there. And then this is off the tractor. There's a diesel tank breather from one side to the other, which is cracked in there. Lovely. It's been a wee while since I've shown you the farm shop. This is the newest bit. Last time I showed you we were building this new hatch area. Where's the lights for it? 
Here's the lights for it. So this is the newest bit we've just kind of built. Any of the grey floor, that's all new. So you can get your bearings. Entrance, if you're coming into the cafe here, queue there, stand there, wait for a table. Tables are there and quite a few over there. Till is here. And then you go into the mid kitchen, we call it. So this is where the guys and girls work, make teas and coffees, uh, make up bowls of soup, make puddings up, make up trays and cutlery and drinks and all that in the mid kitchen. And through that hatch comes the hot food, the sandwiches, the baked potatoes, the souffles, whatever. And basically the hatch used to be in line with that bit there, here, that was the whole hatch, but we extended it right the way back there. It's not quite finished yet. There's still a couple of things to go into here, but it basically means the hatch is now double the size of area um, to prep the food that's going out. So far, it seems to be working really well. Uh, I actually need to come in here. There's a drawer. The rollers on this drawer, I need to, I need to do something to them. I need to pin them back because they keep slipping and falling out. But this is a new bit, which I showed you getting made. When was that? A month ago? Has it been going a month yet? Something like that. But it's up and running, it's going well. That is another part of the kitchen. That's where they prep and make food. That's where all the dishes and whatnot gets done. And then you've got the bakery part of the kitchen, which is just around here. So this is like the whole bakery. And um, we're all there baking all the cakes, all the, all, all that stuff gets made. It's kind of growing arms and legs, this kitchen. It's getting bigger and bigger all the time. That's a wee tour. The very original shop, the mid kitchen that we use as the mid kitchen now, that was the kitchen. This wee square here, that was the whole kitchen. And if you're totally wondering what the hell is going on on this farming video, we have a farm shop. That's the kitchen for the farm shop. I'll give you a quick flying tour, really quick. So this is like gifts, mugs, books, clothing, uh, hats. You can get Crawford's Farm hats right there. Um, uh, wrapping paper, cards, chocolate, sweets, booze. That's, uh, um, the lights are off. I'll show you that another time all down there. That's butchery, pasta, things like that. More booze, lots of booze, lots of booze. And this is the whole veg area, dog foods, plants. And then you go right outside. Oh, the door's locked. But you can see outside, that's all the plants and trees and garden stuff. And that's a tiny wee quick flying tour of the farm shop. It does make life quite easy when you're needing a, a gift for Gate Lady or... Oh, she'd like a wee... Actually, there's something here that I have got her. Where is it? There you go, a wee housey. I think that was the first gift I ever got her. A wee turquoise one from here, from the farm shop, for a good discount. Don't tell her that. We've got a visitor, JM Farming. If you remember, we had a race to 10,000 subscribers. Yeah, and I won. I think it only came down to like five or 10 subscribers in the end. I think Tom Pemberton gave me a shout out. Yeah, and then you started well, you motoring, the yeah. catching up. <laughs> anyway, he's having a wee spin round the shed here, the machinery, just showing him a proper green tractor. You like the other shade of green? I do, yeah. What would this you is pick? how I'm spending my honeymoon, looking at machinery. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky <joy>. you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of it? You like it? I've never driven one. They look nice. It was nice. Yeah. I, I don't have much of a discrepancy between the two. I was just telling Josh there wasn't much difference when we were picking the two between John Deere and Fent. This was just fractionally cheaper. So I, I don't actually have too much of a gripe between them. I'm surprised these were cheaper. I'd have, I'd have thought it would be the other way around. We did as well. Josh, so we've obviously got Simmental cows. Josh, they have got all stabilizers and bulls. Yeah. And you had 120, 30 calves yeah, this year. Cows. And only two they had to touch. That's One was a Sunday that. morning. We Don't probably touched three in 40 cows. Yes, yeah, so it's about three times as many if you add it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a stabiliser thing. Easy calving, quick growing, small calves, small cows. There's a lot more stabilisers about. There is. They're coming popular. And we're a multiplier. So how, long have you, how long have you had them? Um, I think they've had them about uh, seven or eight years now. So we're Josh, they're, they're, they're a research farm. I've just been asking loads of questions about it. It's quite interesting. Basically, you've got kind of three different blocks of feeding styles. And yeah, yeah. So one herd of cows. And then that one herd of cows produces obviously all the calves, so about 130 cows, 130 calves, split up into three platforms, we call them, so three individual farming platforms. The standard is uh, permanent pasture, so what we have grazed grass at home. The second one is high clover content in normal grazed grass, so high clover content sward. And then the third is intensive rearing, um, so four kilos of barley per head per day. And monitoring simple things like growth weight and age of 
slaughter and all that sort of thing, as well as um, all the emissions of environmental stuff that come with it as well. Sounds like a lot of paperwork. <laughs> I don't do the paperwork. <laughs> anyway, you'll see loads more about it. Go and watch him. I'll put his link down there. Top of description, GM Farming. What, how many subscribers are you at now? 16. Slightly no, less than me. <laughs> <laughs> We're we'll getting another, another race to 20,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Josh. Cheers. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Cheers, Josh. He dropped me off a wee gilet as well. Good man. He's been at cattle for a lot more years than I have, so that was quite good to quiz his brain on a lot of different things to do with it all. They, they do a lot of research. It's all research-based stuff, work they're doing. 80 people, I think, work on the farm. 10, I think, on the farm side, and then 70, was that right, the numbers? 70 odd then on the research lab side of things, testing, doing loads of trials and methane numbers and all that stuff. Very, very interesting, so. Cheers for watching. See you tomorrow. If you've not already, like this video.